Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. On today's adventure we fly all the way across the country to the great state of Tennessee in search of some good friends, good food, and of course some good fishing. If you guys are liking these videos and you want to see more just like it, be sure to go down here and subscribe throughout the video. Hit that thumbs up and comment and interact with the video. Enjoy. Well, being that we're in Tennessee, I had to make our first stop at one of the most token items of the great state of Tennessee, and that is Tennessee moonshine. I'm gonna, I have to admit, it, it is only noon, okay, everybody, but it's five o'clock somewhere, and we're just on our way to where we're gonna be meeting Kyle tomorrow morning, and I had to stop. I kept seeing these billboards, and I said, you know what, I gotta share this with the people, and I gotta go try some of the local moonshine in this place. So here it goes, Let's see, they have a big tasting room and stuff, so I'm gonna go in, taste the flavors, and see where this day takes us after this, but I am so excited. Look at how cool this place is. Let's get in here. Oh my God, everybody. They ain't messing around in this place. So cool. A lot going on here. They got clothes. They got every single kind of moonshine. I just walked in and asked the bartender and he's gonna actually take us back and show us the still. They got a bunch of stuff going. They got mash in. It's got this very unique smell in here. It almost smells like pretzels in a way, but I think that's the mash and all the, the brewing going on in the background. But holiday dog oh my god how did they know they know my weakness is here i'm jordan bill bill good yep. to meet you dude what is this place all about it's all about good times and oh. mellow atmosphere yes yeah. i love the smell what am i smelling is that the mash yeah we're actually yeah. cooking shine right now it's very sweet smelling yeah yeah i love it can we check that thing out yeah uh, if jack's not busy i can have to give you a walk okay yeah you can, you can feel this mash right here feel the heat off it yeah, that's the... And that's just... That's just the reaction. That's the fermenting process yeah, of the mash. Wow. What's that? It's a uh, residual heat from the decomposition reaction. Gotcha. So neat. So these big stainless steel tubs. And this is full of, of the mash. And that, I don't know, if it's probably, I'd say, about 80 degrees or so. And that is just from the, the decomposition of all that product in there. And what is this mash? Is it corn? Uh, yeah, that's actually uh, that is mostly corn, uh, a little bit of rye, and uh, a little bit of barley as well. I love the smell. Yeah, it's so super nice. unique. I've never oh, smelled it this process. So when it's, uh, when it's I almost it's related it to it smells like a good pretzel. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know? Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's basically beer right now. It's, it's, Look, it's, it's alive. Beer. It's alive, everybody. Yeah. Look, it's moving. Pretty neat, man. So this is the process. This is this is what they call a still, everybody. I don't know if I'm supposed to be back here, but we're doing it anyways. But super, super cool. And ever since the prohibition, this has been a process that's been taking place in the hill countries of the East Coast like this for forever. Now it's a trend, of course, like most things that used to be illegal. But it's so cool. It's my first time ever seeing it still. And ever witnessing anything like this place. This is really cool. We got the hot water going through, filtering through the all the distilling process and making some tasty moonshine. I think it's time we try some. Bananas. This is bananas. Ooh, that one looks really good. Salt is warm and delicious. Thank you. I cannot wait for this. What do you think, cameraman Sean? I'm excited. <laughs> Live and empty stomach, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We're <laughs> shining at noon on the empty tummy. You can get down into our spirits, our empty spruits, our rum-based creams. We've got a few items off the board that you might be interested in. We've got four Cal Johnson rums, a black, a silver, a coconut, and a spice rum, and a six-year well, blended just, whiskey. Why don't you just give me your favorites? That's my favorite way to do it. Yeah, just go with your favorites. The banana one piqued my interest, and the apple pie, of course, but everything else. Great. Oddly satisfying, man. So, Is it? I, yeah. I like anything banana, honestly. Yeah, so I'll let you uh, check this one out first. Oh, it smells just like a banana Laffy Taffy. That's phenomenal. That one's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one's dangerous. All right, so our most popular flavor is going to be this blackberry right here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that does smell amazing. Wow. Okay, the first two are definitely still are already a favorite. Another oddly satisfying one. 
It'll be like a 60 proof Andy's chocolate. I'm always in the oddly satisfying thing. <laughs> I'll try anything twice, everyone. Mm. Oh man, that'd go good in some coffee. Yes. That's phenomenal. That was a chocolate one, everybody. This is so much fun. That's why I love traveling, everybody. We saw this. We saw this on a billboard. We saw the, like the big old Tennessee Distillery Company on the billboard. He said that's the only advertising they do. And so, for those of you out there who are thinking about using a billboard for advertising, it works. I'm gonna go a different direction with you guys. Yeah. Because <laughs> you wouldn't surprise tequila comes out of this place. Oh, yeah. that's my favorite tequila. That's gonna be our tell of the dragon tequila. <laughs> Killer. All right, guys, now I'm gonna heat you up a little bit, all right? 140.7 proof, straight out the woods. This is right the real the deal. That's the real deal. Y'all. That one will get you. Is that what they call the white lightning? Yeah. <laughs> that is actually very nice to drink, though. Yes. Now, I'm gonna go get you something that we're known for here. Okay. All they're known for, in my opinion, is for good taste and liquor. Wow. This is a cool experience. If you guys are ever in Knoxville, Tennessee, you have to come check this place out. I wish I could take some of this stuff home with me, but it doesn't fly very well, so I might grab a little bit for the trip so far, so we have some for with Kyle and everybody, but I wish I could take some of this home. So this is gonna be a 12 year single barrel whiskey right here. Look at that nice barrel taste. Mmm, it's got that nice woody smell. But smooth again. Every time I've ever drank moonshine in the past, it's everything is very hard to stomach. It goes down really hot and, and spicy, almost kind of burns you up. But that is so easy to drink. It's so tasty. Turns out you can fly this stuff home in the check bag, so I got stocked up enough for a while, I'm guessing. And I got some gifts, of course. But now let's hit the road. Let's get to our Airbnb. And I cannot wait to meet up with Kyle. It's gonna be a really fun few days, you guys. So, morning number one, I'm extremely excited to be in Tennessee, but I'm even more excited to see my brother from another mother, Kyle McClellan. And Kyle and his girlfriend Mags have a YouTube channel also called XXL Chrome Chasing, and they live in the Midwest and travel all along the East Coast, having fun fishing adventures just like we do here on Stay Fishy. So if you haven't already, go down here, hit the link in the description and subscribe to their channel. But morning number one's plan was head to a lake that we'd never fished before and see what happens. Y'all going fishing? <laughs> yeah, we're going to do some trout fishing down here. We got some trout out here. He goes, no, I heard there's a flood coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it never fails, my fishy friends. I forgot something. You notice here how everybody else is putting on warm clothes. And I'm putting on a frown because I'm cold. But I forgot my bibs. This is the forgotten item of the week for Jordan. Uh, this time it was my pants. Didn't recognize me with my pants on. But we have this beautiful lake behind us. It's a chilly morning. It's gonna warm up throughout the day. And I'm really excited to see what kind of species we have here in Tennessee. There's multiple different species in this lake. Kyle kind of gave me the option last night of what I wanted to fish for. He's like, we can fish for, we can fish for bass, we can fish for three different kinds of trout, we can troll for walleye, we can do anything out here. And so I told him it'd be cool if we caught the most species possible so we can kind of show all you people out there the kind of things that the state has to offer. And that's the fun thing, that's what we like to do on State Fishy is travel around and show you what this world has to offer you. So I'm really excited for this morning. This is an incredible setting up here in the Great Smoky Mountains. Let's go do some cowboy things. So we hit the lake, it's freezing freaking cold outside. I'm already not enjoying myself because I forgot my pants, of course. But as soon as we get our lines in and we get everything spread out, we had this real crazy spread of lures going out behind the boat. And we turn around and look, and right there on the sonar, there's fish already underneath us. Oh, we're marking them. We're marking them. Oh, 
Mr. Fishhawk. Going on there. Oh God, taking a hand off. <laughs> okay, it's big. It feels big. It's only 10 pounds. Okay. Neato. Neato, everybody. We just hit the lake. Just kind of rounded the corner. Kyle's got a heck of a spread going here. We got planer boards out the side. That's what those big orange things are that you see kind of cruising. We got the down. Oh, it's a oh. big old laker. Oh God, I'm gonna keep him low. No way. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that, don't do that. Keep your head in the water. Oh God, he doesn't like this. I'm gonna high stick him. I'm gonna high stick him. Oh, I don't like when he does that. Oh God, stop it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! oh. <laughs> Look at that thing! Yeah, baby! Woo. Great way to start today. Great! The Mackinac Lake Trout. It is a Mackinac. Wow! Incredible colors on this thing. We haven't been set up. We haven't even got all the lights no, in the water. No, no. <laughs> Just rounded this corner. And it's what happens when these things bite the, the, the lines on the downrigger is the rod just pops straight up. You'll see a little bit of a bite, but all of a sudden the line goes slack. And the line went slack and Kyle was yelling back here. I was hiding in front of the heater because I forgot my pants. And look what we pulled up. That's a nice laker for here. That's a good fish. Well, that happened a lot faster than expected. We're out on this lake. Again, Kyle's never fished here. I've never fished here. We're in a completely different state on the other side of the country for both of us. And we're fishing for about five minutes and fish on with a beautiful, beautiful Mackinac Lake Trout, which I couldn't be more excited to catch. What an incredible creature, everybody. Such a great way to start the day in the trip in Tennessee here. Species number one, Mackinac Lake Trout. Check it off the list. Here he goes. Gonna let him go. Later, buddy. Shot right back down. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. Thank you. Awesome, bro. Yeah. Awesome way to start the day. Hey, Cold nose, big fish. Oh, fish, fish. Top board, top board, right there, right there. He's a big old boy. <laughs> oh, look at him, he's, he's running. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really nice looking rainbow. Holy crap. That was big. I didn't even feel him on there. I thought he wasn't on there. I was like, oh, he definitely came on. <laughs> Hey, nice. Oh, wow. That is a good looking rainbow, dude. Yeah, it's really pretty. Jeez. Wow. Great color on them, man. They're little chunk, little butterballs. About to take a little schnoozer. A little nappy. Oh, fish, fish. Oh, yeah. Get him. Get him. Take a drag, baby. Woo! What do we got here? I'm not sure yet. Just a little heavier than the last one, though. So. so there's a wide variety of species in this lake. We could catch anything from a walleye bass to a big pike, musky, striper, lake trout, brown trout, rainbow trout. So it's really anybody's guess what's coming in right now. We're thinking it's probably a brown or a rainbow just where it was at in the water column, but you never know what's going to come in. This one looks big. This is actually way bigger than the last one. Let's see what this is. Oh, nice rainbow, guys. Really nice rainbow. Oh! oh off in the net, net too. Oh my gosh. Goodness yes. gracious. That's awesome. That was exciting. He's a fighter. Whoa. There he goes. <laughs> awesome, he went right off. Nice job, hell yeah. <laughs> Trout slayers. Beautiful rainbow. Man, and the, every fish we've caught so far looks so different. It does. God. Chrome rainbow, a darker colored up rainbow, and a nice good looking lake yeah. trout. So. so you guys could probably notice the difference between those two fish. One was a female and one was a male. That last one was a male. It had that beautiful spawning color because this time of year, the trout will actually go and spawn in the winter time like this. So they'll start to get those spawning colors. That first one that we'll flash back to was a female. You can see how she had that really short snout on her and kind of a bigger belly because she's full of eggs. And the other one is the male and it has that big hook jaw at the bottom and has those beautiful spawning colors on it. So we've seen three different kinds of fish really, two different species. It's been a great morning already. Let's keep fishing. Oh, fish, 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 bottom board, bottom board. Oh, it's ripping him. Oh, baby. It's oh, it's that one. <laughs> we got a screamer, baby. What is it? Where is it? I don't know. 
This is a good fish. Is it a, is a diver rod? No, it's a board. It's an inside board, but. Oh, it's going, it's pulling the line through the board. Yeah, how deep are we? It's not bottom for <laughs> 250. <laughs> 250 feet, everyone. What is it? I don't know. We just started changing up some baits, guys, and kind of dialing things in here because we've had one rod that's been working good. So we're getting stuff figured out here. And we just kind of rounded this corner when we first started here this morning. You see all that haze and all that smoke coming off the water. And the wind was really blowing in this part of the lake. So we came around this corner. It's turning into a glassy lake out here. And as soon as we came out into the main part of the lake, we're catching bigger fish. Ooh, this is a nice fish. So we're coming up here. We'll see what we got, guys. What oh, we got? Gosh. What do we got? Yeah, it's a brown? It's a brown, guys. It's a brown. It's a brown. Oh, hold on, don't you oh, oh, dare. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, species number three. Wow, it's all like a chrome brown, too. Look at this thing. Brownie, baby. Like, holy crap, that's a cool looking brown. <laughs> what a beautiful brown. Just that cool chrome with some red orange dots, too. Just a that beautiful gill, fish. The gills on these fish, you could look at that, it's just like a, a, a piece of artwork by the creator himself. Wow. What a cool fish, guys. Just a great day out here. We've now caught lake trout, rainbow trout, and brown trout. Just an awesome day. It was a chilly morning, but the sun's coming out. We're warming up. <laughs> How neat. Heck yeah. Cool. What a way to go, man. Let's get them back. There he goes. There he goes, guys. He was ready. Awesome. Well, the day of fishing turned out to be one that I will not soon forget. It's so neat to be able to travel to a place with a friend and a group of friends and go out on a fishing experience and have success. This is such a such a different place for all of us. The lakes are different. The species are a little bit different. Um, the area is so much different. And to be able to go out and have success, uh, totally winging it, honestly. I, I'm not going to throw Kyle under the bus here, but we'd never fished here before and we'd never even tried it. I'm pretty sure that he saw on YouTube how to go fish this lake and it all came together in an incredible day with three different species so I'm super excited it's time to head back to town and get some grub in our belly all right everybody well time to change the scenery a little bit but before we do I got to pick up a few ingredients for our little river lunch that we're gonna do so we're here at food city we're gonna run inside I'm gonna get the ingredients I need for this meal, and then we're gonna hit the river. Shallots. Cilantro. Of course, we gotta go with the home cheese. Some Tillamook sharp cheddar. Some Montreal steak seasoning. And last but not least, ooh, can of cream of mushroom and roasted garlic. And so for the protein in this meal, we're actually going to use some leftover meat from a dinner we went out last night. And if you guys haven't seen my other channel, Addicted Fishing, there's links in the description to all these videos that we put out here on Stay Fishy. But me and Kyle and all of us went out last night for an incredible dinner at a southern style barbecue place here in Tennessee. And of course, what would our meal be without a couple of white cloths? Duh. And one more. Oh my God, I almost forgot the most important part of this whole recipe. Yep. Tater tots. All right, we're ready to check out. Let's get to the river. Ah, the great outdoors. All right, so we beat Kyle and Maggie to the spot, but we're gonna hike in, get a hole secured, and start gathering some wooden stuff so that we can get this cooking going. We're gonna wait for them to fish because we don't wanna be spoiling the hole for them. And honestly, I'm just excited to walk around in the woods. Being over here on the East Coast and in the Midwest, just it's such a different forestation. and so much different of a climate than what I'm used to back in the, in the Northwest. And so we're gonna take a little stroll through the woods, check out some of the trees and some of the wildlife, and then we're gonna go find a spot to cook some lunch. My goodness, what an absolutely gorgeous day this has turned into. And it's so refreshing to be somewhere new. I think that is my very favorite thing about fishing. And I think a lot of you fishy friends out there that are watching these videos and will continue to watch these videos will learn. And it's not so much about the fishing that we'll be, that we'll be talking about on this channel. You know, our main goal is travel, 
friends, food, experiences, and then fishing. The fishing is the reason we go to these places, but the reason that we're there having fun is a completely different sense. And like this today, spending time in just different kinds of trees even, as simple as that. You know, walking around in these hardwoods, we have these oaks, we have these sycamore trees, we got all these different types of, of vegetation and mushroom growth and everything's new. I think that is the, the highlight of why I love to travel and, and why I love this place in Tennessee so far is just the sheer difference that you see in the entire landscape, in the, in the rocks, in the river, the trees, the fresh air, even, even the food tastes a little bit different down here. People talk a little different, everybody's nice. It's truly that kind of Southern hospitality and I'm absolutely loving it. But it's, it's just so cool as I'm walking through here, I feel like I'm a little white-tailed deer just prancing through the woodlands. My first observation of this little creek here, this river, I shouldn't call it a little creek, is this super neat geology. Look at the, the style of rocks that are in here. This is very shaly, kind of just very interesting shapes of rocks. Something that I'm really not used to. It really is just shale, just a shale rock bottom with some beautiful, beautiful different little, ooh, you can already tell. I was gonna say there's gotta be some quartz or some, some different kind of minerals that settles and under all the pressure over time creates these beautiful crystals and stuff around here. And that's something that the, the East Coast, like here in Arkansas and, and Kentucky and some of the other places are famous for is these beautiful terminated crystals and these other forms of, of geology that you don't really see anywhere else in the country. Look at this setting. Absolutely incredible. And this looks like a pretty good little spot right out here in front of me. You see this little vein. These trout are all about feeding lanes. They like to live where it's easiest for them to survive. And this looks like a pretty easy little survival spot for them where they can just kind of nose into these little areas, chill out, and let that food come right to them. Okay, I immediately changed my mind. I decided I shouldn't be a bad friend. I'm gonna wait for Kyle and Megs to get here before we start fishing. I don't wanna low hole them or high hole them or whatever you want. So I saved my, my spot with my gear out there on the river. Hopefully the water doesn't come up. And I'm gonna go start getting a little bit of firewood together and gathering a little firewood, make myself a little fire pit and wait for them to get down here so we can start fishing. But obviously lots of dry wood here in this kind of forest. This deciduous forest is really interesting for me. Like, the last few videos that we've been filming out out west in, in Oregon and Washington, I'm having a hard time in a lot of places finding wood or having to buy firewood and take it with me to make these videos because everything's too wet. We've had a lot of snow, a lot of rain, but it doesn't look like we're gonna have a hard time finding something to start a fire with here. So let's gather some wood. This looks like a good little spot right here. We'll round some rocks up really quick, make ourselves a little fire pit. Wow, look at these neat burls in this old dead tree. Looks like an oak tree. Really cool. Beautiful little natural architecture in that wood. That's pretty dry. So I'm sure all of you have noticed so far that Mr. Little Man is not here because we flew United and I didn't trust the United to handle my little man. But we have our guest star appearance, Mrs. Dipsy in the house. Hi, little baby girl. Woohoo! Oh yeah! Come here, you. Come here, you. Come here, you. Hi, Hi little hot. girl. Hi, you little girl. Boy, it's a little girl fan, but he doesn't know her yet. <laughs> Hi, you. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that she should catch a fish? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was a oh, yes all day that, long. That was a yeah. yeah it's it's me. Okay, so it's time to catch a fish real quick before we get to cooking lunch. But what I got here, Kyle hooked me up with a little spawn sack. And we're, what we're fishing with is just a little trout rod. I got a small little reel on here, and I got my addicted fix float. And this is a cool little thing that we came out with with addicted fishing. Uh, it's a little trout float. These aren't quite available yet, but you can, you will be able to find them soon. They're really effective. Got a couple of split shots down to a hook. And all I got on there is a, what we call a spawn bag. That's just got a couple of, of salmon eggs in it with a little couple of styrofoam puffs in there that help that thing float. And I got, a, like, like I said before, I got this dark little seam out here in front of me. And it's kind of the only place those trout might be able to hide in there. So I think my odds are pretty good. I'm going to toss it over here. Let's see what happens. A little dinner and a show here. Keep that right in that bubble line. Just kind of slowly feed that thing back there. 
Oh. Okay, cast number two. How many casts is it going to take? Oh, I see him rolling around in there. I can actually see him swimming. That is so cool. Just going to let it keep going. Keep going until it starts hitting bottom. Oh, what was that? Did you feel my stick, you little girl? You're crazy. She thinks it's a stinking treat. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> she thinks it's a treat. <laughs> okay, little girl, let's start this fire together. Let's do it. No. Nope, you don't want to eat that. <laughs> She's so curious. I love it. Oh, she's stealing the firewood. She's stealing the firewood. <laughs> Just look at the setting behind us, everybody. This is the East Coast at its true form. It's so rare to, I, to me to be able to come to this part of the country and have the solitude that we've found so far on this trip. You know, we were out there on that lake this morning all by ourselves. And it's a Sunday. This is the Lord's Day itself. And we're out here enjoying this beautiful day, catching fish behind us, starting a fire to make a great meal with some good friends. I cannot wait to get some food in my belly and catch a few more fish before night falls. Okay, everybody, here goes the Riverside Goulash. We already saw the ingredients, so I'm not going to go over them again. I'm just going to get them prepared. But what I'm going to basically do is going to make sort of a casserole style of a meal here. I'm going to take my pan. I'm going to get everything in the bottom of that bad boy. I'm going to get these taters started first, I think. I'm going to fill up the pan with those. And these things actually have quite a bit of oil in them already, so you know what? We got a lot of people here, let's go most of them. So these things already have quite a bit of oil in them, so I'm gonna throw them over here on the fire, start getting those warmed up a little bit. So I'm gonna take some of the cilantro. And cilantro is one of my very favorite herbs, honestly. Parsley is not really my favorite, but I kind of would, I'll eat cilantro on just about anything, to tell you the truth. Not anything, but I'll try anything twice, I always like to say. So, get that cilantro nice and diced up there. A little bit of river grass in it, never hurts. Some fiber for you. Then, I'm gonna do one of my shallots. And shallots are one of my favorite kind of onions to use. They're a very mild flavor. They're not as spicy as a normal red onion would be. And they're the perfect size for backpacking and, and hiking in to cook like this. Because as you see, you don't really want to pack a big onion around. So one of those works absolutely perfect. A long way so I have some nice strips of onion here and you can see how nice these things cut up too this is that perfect little serving size of onion okay we got that stuff going I'm gonna go right in the pan right away with my taters here Get a little bit of that cilantro in there again a little river grass for fiber never hurt no one I'm gonna take a big chunk of butter here that way I can throw that in the bottom of that pan once all that stuff gets a little defrosted there. But like I said, tater tots on their own have quite a bit of oil already in them because they're pre-cooked and then frozen, of course. So we got that going. Now, for the best part of all, I'm gonna get just a big old handful of meat here. I'm just gonna chop this stuff up a little bit, get it in a little bit smaller pieces. And I'm gonna actually try to keep some of these fattier pieces so that I can actually get that nice oil and all that good flavor that comes out of all this pork into the bottom of my pan. It'll actually kind of help this whole recipe cook too, so. There we go, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is really happening. What's in box number two? Take one of those. Got some awesome sauce from this, this place too. It's gonna add a really nice spice. We're gonna add that to the top before we add our cheese at the very end, so. I'm gonna slice this big old fatty chunk of pork up too. That is gonna be good. Now you guys are probably wondering what the hell am I gonna do with this cream of mushroom soup? And this is kind of what makes it the goulash. Using either like a, a cream of chicken or a cream of mushroom or some sort of beef based broth. Uh, but any sort of like creamy sort of, of soup that you add to this is what's gonna bring it all together and kind of make it that casserole-y taste. So 
we got the onions. A lot of times you can throw some green beans in there, whatever you want, but I kept it simple and easy because we had to pack in here quite a ways today to get to this spot to cook for you guys. So creamy mushroom soup is gonna go in after the meat and we're gonna simmer that all together, add our stuff on top, and then it'll be time to eat. You can see how that meat's starting to caramelize. A little bit of that fat's coming out. You can see that glaze of that fat starting to get on those potatoes. And I don't think I'm gonna add any more seasoning here. A lot of times the potatoes will bland out the taste of the meat, but I think we got plenty of seasoning. And a lot of these are end cuts and those top cuts, so there's a lot of seasoning already on the edge of that meat. So I'm gonna let that season the rest of the dish. And obviously it's a little gelatinous right now, but once that simmers down, warms up, we'll get that really nice casserole feel to it. Then we'll add our last bit of ingredients. Oh, now we're talking. My fishy friends, look at this. All right, I think we're ready for the cheese. Oregon zone. Fill them up, chit. Nice little dusting here. I'm not gonna overdo the cheese. I want a nice presentation here. Okay. And while that's melting, I'm gonna put some of this Southern Craft barbecue sauce right here. Do a nice little drizzle all the way around. It's gonna add some great spice. Oh man. And on top of the cheese, I'm gonna go a nice little drizzle of cilantro right in the center there. All right guys, dinner is served. This looks Ladies absolutely first. incredible. Thank you. Got some stolen yeah, store forks. Thanks, buddy. Yes, sir. Wow, look at that. The sizzle. Is it the steak or the sizzle? Or is it both? <laughs> Get that plate out. Thank and you. Slide it right off. Perfect. Oh, cheesy goodness. Oh, my cheesy goodness. Wow. Mr. Kyle, there you are, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Wow, guys, that looks absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. This hot meal is gonna be exactly what I needed. Cameraman Sean. Yummy. Here's your fork, brother. And I'm eating out of the pan. Okay, first thoughts, everybody. Delicious. Mmm. Epic. Mmm. I love how crispy and nice that bottom end got there. Got that nice little glaze to it. <laughs> she wanted it. <laughs> mm. Definitely hot. Well, this turned out great. We'll call it the leftover goulash. The old leftover barbecue goulash on the bank of the river in old Tennessee. Doesn't get any better. Crispy, cheesy, man. Mm -hmm. Wow. Really good. Wow. So I gotta say, sitting around that fire, watching the sun go down, enjoying this incredible atmosphere that Tennessee has with two good friends, really kind of summed up the wholesomeness of this trip. It's so rare that you fly all the way across the country to meet up with somebody and go fishing, but in this case, it worked out to a T. I love Kyle and Mags, they're so much fun to be around, and especially in a place like this with the different trees, the different geology, different water, and just different people. It's so interesting to fly across the country and experience that different culture and do the same thing that you love, that is go fishing and spend time outdoors. So I must say, the end of that first day really was special, and I'll I'll never forget it. Well, obviously it's the next day now. It's light out. And last night when I left you guys, it was dark. And I did a little due diligence and I started doing a little research on really good fried chicken in this area. And there wasn't anything super close. So I decided, heck, we'll wait till the morning on our way back to Knoxville to fly out back home to Washington and had to check out the world famous, guesses, fried chicken. 
I cannot wait. I've been actually craving some fried chicken for quite a while. So let's get inside and let's see what all this hype is about. Oh my God, I already love it. Total Southern hospitality. We got the tin roof. We got the plaid, tablecloths. There's chicken all around us. Yes. Perfect idea. I'm glad we waited. This is gonna be worth it. I think we kind of have to get the fried pickles, right? You want the fried pickles? Yeah. What is this place? What's what's the most famous dish? Like what's the best? Like wing thighs? They, I mean, like what? Now, wing... can I eat it? Yeah. I like the wings. Okay. I do wings and I like layers. Okay. And we have pet fish. Everything's hot, everybody. She said everything is spicy. Now that she said catfish too, I'm kind of like, my enthusiasm is peaked on this catfish. Catfish does sound pretty good. We got fried pickles on the way. I had to go with the sweet tea. Oh, that's phenomenal. I'm a sweet tea guy to begin with, but that is some damn good sweet tea. Mmm. So good. So let's take a look at the menu. I got the fried pickles on the way. I'm more of a dark meat guy. I like legs and thighs. I might have to go with a three piece dark meat. White meat's a little too dry for me at times. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going with. Three piece dark meat, two thighs and a leg. Yeah. <laughs> well, we may have all had fried pickles out there, but very seldom do you find fried pickle spares. And I'm in. Give it a try. Mm. It's got like a really nice like beer batter to it almost. I guess it's the same batter they use for the chicken. Unreal. Mm. Real nice strong dill flavor to it. Nice crunchy pickle in between here. Let's give you a little shove. Those are amazing. Thank you, dude. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Nice, thank enjoy? you. First impression, hell yeah. I'm going for the drummy first. It looks hotter than hell, but I don't care. I'll burn myself for you guys. Look at that. Perfect crispy, perfect color. Mm. I can see why this place is world famous now. That is some killer fried chicken. I'm gonna try my coleslaw. Got a nice little dusting of seasoning salt on top. Mmm. Nice and sweet. The mac and cheese looks like ridiculous. Mmm. All together, absolutely amazing restaurant here. I'm super glad we took the time to come out this way and get some of the world famous chicken. I needed this. Well, everyone, that's a wrap for this Stay Fishy adventure. I want to thank you all so much for joining us here on this Tennessee adventure. Until next time, you stay fishy, we'll see you out there. This might not make it in the pan. Oh, man. Oh, what do you think, little girl? Mmm. Wow. <laughs> okay, here you go. Just a little treat. Come here. Here you go, sweet girl. Oh. oh <laughs>